ground. Look around you, man. You can find inspiration. You can find discouragement. It all depends on you. Perception is everything. Some people just hear another song. Some people hear the greatest. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays I bump side A. Traffic going bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. So once you once you got to Def Jam, what changed? Money. Um, they had to prove themselves because we had two number one albums back to back. See, people talk about uh, my era, but EPMD was the only one to have four number one albums straight. Mm. People don't talk about that. Four. We, we do. Four. We do. I have. Twelve number one singles within my and within my crew from the Red Man, Murray, Illegal, Eric Sermon, and EPMD. Nobody, you, there's no talking because there's not like it used to be. We didn't have no social media, have all this stuff that people talk right. about. But me, and they talk about what I what I was doing. I was doing as much R and B as as I was doing rap. I was already doing Josie. I was already doing Mary. I was already Already had the stuff going. Chico the Bars, D'Angelo, Brownstones. When you hear If You Love Me and you sing, you hear Trace, you know I mean, Tory Lane, yeah, I, I did that. That's that's only on the bottom beat is K Soul Spellbound. That's going boom, boom. T- 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 k- mm-hmm. Did he get that from DMX though? What? Spellbound. I, yeah, I. I, I <laughs> <laughs> first time Yo, it's, it's so crazy because you see DMX's. You won't know DMX to lie, right? Right. Like he won't be like, yo, you can't see him lying. I think that in jail, they was together. And you saw Solo, the, the lie detector test didn't give it to him all the way. Solo was very creative. Very. Right. DMX creative too. But to me, I think they both of them was in there together. And I think that Solo mastered it. Mm. The spellbound mm. stuff. Yeah. Spelling. Spelling yeah. out the okay. Mm. Uh, mm. I guess. I guess. But I can't see DMX, the person that we know, saying it and it's not and he's right. He believes yeah. he, he he thinks right. he's mm-hmm. They probably had a siphon in the yard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I've heard that happen a couple of times, man. Yeah. You know. heard what? That it'd be a cipher in the yard and yeah, somebody get out before somebody the other person. And take, and take oh, that rhyme would be yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know two people that's <laughs> rappers. Said, I know two people right now that's rappers that did that. That I was locked up with. Wow. And they made some money. Dave Hollister was one of yours. I got him from when I did Black Street. Mm-hmm. One woman, man. So, 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 so no, the, 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 that was Mike City. Okay. I did the, the first album was just under me. Okay. I produced mm-hmm. the first. The second one, again, me and Dave got into a situation. He wanted to get out of my contract because, he again, he had blew up. Mm-hmm. But he had got some manager nigga. You know how for niggas. Yeah. So we in L.A. He got some street niggas to come in strong on me. Right. Because either you're going to go bankrupt or I'm going to sign the release. I'm in Cali with a couple of... Um, Manfield Crip niggas, D Mac, fucking um, my boy Cheetah. These are dudes who we hang out with again, too. Right. So they come at me, whatever, with the guy. Whatever, he's, you know, saying, yo, so with the Dave contract, boom, boom. I'm like, Dave got you coming here um, for me to sign the paper for him to get a release? He's like, I'm like, why would you want to do that? Like, you know, because I hooked Dave up. He first he set me up for a, a, a navigator. Hmm. Then he wanted seventy five thousand dollars cash up front, along with the with, with the budget. Hmm. So he stuck me up, but I knew I was getting a million dollars, so I really didn't care about what he was asking for. Mm-hmm. Right. But I said, yo, but no, you know he's sticking me up because they was assigned, was a hired help in Black Street. They never signed them. That's why I was able to get them. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that? Before I let go, two million records, and he ain't signed. Wow. Was that the reason? What you mean? I don't know what happened. Pulling stuff like that. But but the fact that he wasn't signed was kind of ill. 
Yeah. MTV don't want two million records before they go whatever. Right. So I was able to to go ahead whatever. But he stuck me up for the for the navigator and for some for some upfront cash. So it was cool. But the fact that he had gotten to a situation, whatever happened, this guy had came and and, and came in his life as management. Like yo, we don't need Eric. Gonna get rid of him. So that's strong on me. So I laughed because again, oh, we can happen. It can happen right now. What, what are we doing? So my man was like, yo. What up, nigga? To, to the dude, like, mm. that nigga's my son. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he's talking, yo, Dave, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> on my mom's. Ain't gonna yeah. happen. So, so that was my last thing. He went bankrupt and got out. Wow. He went bankrupt. Yeah. yeah, he had to get, cause he, get out of my shit. Because he wanted to get out. Because the manager that he was with was like, yo, Wanted it to happen. That's the only way it's going to happen. Because it wasn't going to be me signing no paper. Mm-hmm. So you had to pay out. No, I had to pay. He had to do shitty. He went bankrupt. So he gets he gets to get off. Oh, declare bankruptcy. Right. Yeah, get, yeah. right so to get out of the debt. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you want to bounce from Eric Sermon doing all this? Because shit? Because whoever represents him, they, they did that. But again, after he left, that was the end. Of, you didn't hear from him no more. Is that why you you haven't? Cause you didn't you didn't make your own. There was never like a hit squad records per se that signed all these people who you were attached to. You didn't like have artists. You worked with. Well, them. the hit squad was different. Death Squad came after the hit squad. So Death Squad was me, Redman, Keith Murray, Dave Hollister, mm-hmm. Alfonso. That, that that was came after. That you was started me. Death Death Squad. I did. I had to. No, that was after Hit Squad. He started after Hit Squad. Yeah. You said you had to. Why? Because the because the hit squad was over, and I was like. I could, do I fight for the name to get the hit squad name, or do I start something different? And Russell was like, start something different. So I said, let me get that death, you know? Yeah, you know, right, like, right. Go ahead, then take it. You know? Death squad. You know we got to talk about why the original crew broke up. You guys cool since eighth grade, yeah. doing yeah. records together. He, he convinces you to come do a record. You convince him to rap. He was originally a DJ. Y'all go to the studio. You're the babies of the era. You all these massive giants are now have their eyes on you, and you're creating a dynasty. I'm fast forwarding through a lot of shit. You're yeah. creating this dynasty of dope. Paris was a problem. I mean, like I said, for those those beginning ideas was mostly Paris Smith in the beginning. Right. Mm-hmm. The, the beginning because again he, he was a DJ, so he had the records. Right. People look at me and say automatically think it's me, but it was. Paris Smith was Because you went on to be the ill producer. Afterwards, yes. Right. 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 But nobody saw it. He didn't do that. You mm. did that. Right. The, the remix God, everybody comes. Well, I'm, I'm saying I want people to know too that Paris Smith in the beginning, strictly business, you know, that's mostly his brainchild. Exactly. Right. As far as as far as the records that because he was a DJ. He had the he had them. His father had the more bounce zap tape, you know, yeah, so is. so whatever. Um, and then the break beats, he had the break beats. So it's my thing, break beats and and whatever. And then um we found the the Bob um the Eric Clapton version of Shot the Sheriff inside the label. Mm-hmm. They had records inside there. We picked that up and you know had that. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. Right. So again, and then you a customer again, again, we didn't program nothing. Mm-hmm. Or we what we had ideas of what we wanted to make. So go ahead with what you gonna say again. No, just his squad, you were saying why his squad. Yeah, yeah no, no, we were actually getting why these guys split up. That's right. Oh, yeah. Said. Right. Yeah. But we're going to take a five minute break, bro. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays, I'm on side A. Traffic going bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. Take so long to get from Monday to Friday. Then you wake up on Sunday like it was just Friday. Cry pays the iron cage, had to find ways. I wasn't trying to sleep a nine to five till my dying days. Friends and not true. I got to do it.